Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Hello, yes, I'm Pastor Don from Oregon, Oregon. I have a ministry called New Day Ministries, and I'm here today to share the word with you. But first of all, I'd like to pray. Lord God, we come before you. I ask, Lord God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your ability that you have given us to understand what your word has to say. We thank you, Lord, that, we'll, that the ears of the people that hear this will be open to understand what your word has to say for them today. We thank you, Lord, that um, your presence is what's most important in our lives. And we ask you, Lord God, to be with us now as we listen and hear and have our ears open and our eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. Talk to you today about you can change the way you think. We have two things that we, in this world, that happens in our brain. One is we have the mind that expresses the thoughts that come forth, and our brain is what stores it. And as it says in Romans 7, and I'll read this to you, what shall we say then? It's 7, 16, excuse me, I'm sorry. Then... If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is good. But it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is my flesh, nothing good dwells in you in for well dwells for it for to will it presence with me, but now for to perform it what was good I do not find. For the good that I will do I do not do, but the evil I will do to do I, that I practice. For if I do not, for if I do what I will not do, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Pastor Robert years ago asked me to start doing some reading in the Bible. He asked me to do Psalms and Proverbs, so many a day for a long time, and that started me on a path of trying to understand why I didn't really want to be involved with the Word. I didn't want to do the word, or I didn't believe the word, or I didn't have faith in the word. So I, like Paul, I was doing things I didn't want to do. So then I got to doing some reading and studying and understanding the scriptures. And so I seen that uh, the brain has stored all these negative actions for years and years and years that I had in the past. And they were stored in there, and every now and then, whenever something happened immediately or suddenly, I would react with that stored memory. And so I thought, well, how do I change that? So it says in Romans, Romans 7, 23, But I see another law of my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity the law of sin, which is in my memories, or in my members. So I got the, you know, praying and asking God and giving direction, because God come to me about six months ago, and he said, why don't you believe? And I said, but Lord, I do believe. And he said, no, you don't. And he said, those negative thoughts that have been there for so long keep coming out, and they keep coming forth whenever you ask for something or when you pray for something, and it destroys or causes doubt, and you don't believe. I said, okay, Lord, so what do I do about it? And he said, in Mark 4, 24, take heed what you hear, the same measure you use, it will be measured to you who hear. We get in the world, we deal with the world, particularly my line of work, I'm a mechanic, and there's a lot of cussing, a lot of swearing, a lot of bad words go on. And we look, the same happens every day, and a lot of negative thoughts happen in the mechanic world. And so every person that I've ever met has always had, or always brings forth, negative thoughts. And so I said, okay, so what do I do now, Lord? And he says, stop listening to those things you hear. Stop listening to the negative thoughts. Start changing them. It said in Genesis, so God has created man, Genesis 1, 27. Take heed. Or, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God has he created them, male and female. And so God says, I created you. I'm the one that caused you to come into being. 
So I can cause you to want to change your mind, to want to go in and bring out those thoughts and change them so that you can have a better way of looking at life, a better way of looking at my word, a better way of believing and having faith in my word. Your soul, or mind, has one foot in the door of the spirit and one foot in the world. So you have these two conflicting things going on all the time. And it causes you to want to, well, well I believe for healing. As Miriam said, yes, you believe for healing. But then you have this other thought that comes along and says, well, I don't know if I will be healed. Just like that person that Robert was talking about. So you have to bring that thought forward and change that thought because it'll continually, constantly harass you if you don't. Because it's always, it's there, it's been there. Because the brain is like a storage pattern. It stores things that you receive over all your lifetime. It's stored in there. And you need to change that thought. It's kind of like when somebody was smoking cigarettes. I don't know how many people know people that smoke cigarettes. But they always tell me, well, I can't change or I can't quit. Well, the reason why they can't is, as they told me in health class when I was in high school, that it creates a pattern in your mind that says, okay, you smoke a cigarette. I like that. Yes, I need a cigarette. Yes, I need a cigarette. And it gets deeper and deeper and deeper as time goes on, and pretty soon it's real hard to quit because you have this pattern that's set up. So you have to go in, and like what I did when I got saved, was I said, okay, Lord, I don't want to smoke anymore, and I don't want to drink anymore, and I don't want to take drugs anymore. So the Lord gave me the ability to start changing those thoughts. So many days I'd sit down and say, okay, thought of cigarette come along. I said, no, I'm going to accept that thought. I'm going to get rid of that thought. I'm going to change that brain pattern so that I no longer want to smoke cigarettes. And so that's how I dealt with cigarettes and drinking and drugs. God gave me the ability to deal with it because he had healed me of it. And he didn't want me to go back to it. So over a period of time, that's how I took care of those situations in my life. It says, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, huh? Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as I kept thinking about these thoughts and these negative thoughts coming forward, I thought, okay, I've got to change that thought. And it takes some time. You can't, I found out, I mean, maybe some people do instantaneously, but I found out it took me some time to get rid of those negative thoughts. It took time. If, every time a negative thought would come forward, I'd replace it with a positive thought. And I kept putting the positive thought in place of the negative thought, and that way I was able to change that thought. And it says in Matthew 12, 35. I'll go to it because I didn't write it down. It says, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. Think of it like this here. You ask your heart. What, if, what, is that, what are we talking about here? Your heart doesn't record your thoughts, but your brain does. So let's replace that with, in your heart, uh, treasure of your mind or heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures brings out forth evil things. And one of the things, of going back to Romans 7, is you have to understand that Paul was raised in a society that taught the Old Testament over and over again. Because he said he's a Pharisees of Pharisees, a Sadducees of Sadducees. So his training for most of his life was definitely scriptural, definitely with the Bible. A little bit of misunderstanding there along the way. But still, we don't do that in our society today. We don't train our children to start out thinking like they should, thinking positive thoughts. You hear it all the time. People are teaching their children negative thoughts constantly and continuously. So as a teacher of the Word, I've been trying to, and working at teaching people how to change their opinion of themselves, the negative thoughts of themselves, the negative thoughts that they live with by bringing out good things in their life. And as I talk with them, um, Romans 12, 2 says, huh? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, let's go back. You're right. Uh, Uh, which, what therefore, if for you do not know what your measure of 35. Uh, 
Test le least. Uh, I'm in 13. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I got on the wrong page. My page is stuck together. <laughs> My page is stuck together. Do what? My page is stuck together. Thank you. What happened? You got an old Bible. <laughs> uh, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give you account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And that's what I'm talking about. As you think, as you, and I've, I've had this happen, and I'm sure that you have. You come here, come along, have a certain attitude, maybe you have a certain look or something, and you go, oh, I don't like that guy. Or, you know, that guy doesn't fit in my pattern, or, or that person is not what I accept. And this happens to everybody. I don't know a person that I know that certain words or certain actions or certain things that people do causes them to reject that person, or if you want to call the word judgment of that person. So I've been working on taking my attitude about certain people and taking that attitude and say, okay, that's the attitude I think about that person, so how can I change it? So then I start looking for the positive parts of that person, the positive actions of that person, his positive lifestyle, so that I can no longer judge him, but I can accept him and love him. And that's what it's talking about. So that's what I've been doing. And so it's been helping me have a better attitude towards everybody. Because a lot of people say, why aren't you mad about this? How come you aren't angry about this? And I said, because I'm changing the way I look at people, the way I think about people. Um, Romans 12.2 And I'll be honest with you, it's a quest, a constant quest to want to change. We don't just change overnight. Sure, it would be nice to, but in many cases it doesn't happen. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind, what you, what you may, that you may prove what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And that's where we want to get to. That's where we want to, what our focus should be, is to change so that we are acceptable to the perfect will of God. Meaning that as you look at people, as you speak things, or as you think things, that you're no longer thinking it the way you were trained or taught to think them, but you think them the way God wants you to think them. And your pastor mind has received things, some good, some bad. But as your life is lived out, you look at those things and say, do I really want to live like that? Do I really want to think like that? Is that how I want to accept people? No. That's not how we should do it. We should look at it in the eyes of Jesus Christ and say, this is what I want to do. Galatians 6, 7, and 8. I started reading a book by Carolyn Leaf that started part of this process. I don't know if you guys ever read any of her works or not. But that's where I started this process some when I got into that. It says, in 6, 7, and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he shall reap. He shall also reap. For he who sows the flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows the spirit, of the spirit will reap everlasting life. So we, we continually sow in the spirit, which is the only thing, the Holy Spirit is the only thing that can actually change your, the way you think. It only change the patterns in your mind. It's through the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that gives you the strength the enlightenment and the understanding to change those thoughts that have been buried for so many years in your mind. And when you go into starting dealing with, like what I did with Good Samaritan Ministries, you start dealing with people, you run across a lot of this. And these people go to church, they have a Christian background, but a lot of their thoughts are not where they should be because they keep dwelling on the past. Um, 2 Corinthians 2.5 2 Corinthians 2.17 Excuse me. 517. 2 Corinthians 517. I'll get it correct yet. <laughs> nice to have somebody here help me out. <laughs> Thank you. I don't that's behind me. I can't see back. I don't have back in the eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> mm. 
Therefore, everyone is in Christ, and he is a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. When Robert quoted that scripture to me in the beginning of my Christian walk with him, I didn't quite understand what that scripture was talking about. Because it says, you know, all, all, therefore, everything is in Christ is, is a new creation. All things pass away. Yes, a lot of my lifestyle did pass away. But as years went on, as time went on, a lot of that stuff crept back into my life. And I didn't really know, understand how to stop it because nobody told me that those things that are crept back into my life or the patterns or the thoughts that have been buried in my brain for so many years that they started coming forth. Because it says, you know, like Miriam said, the devil plays havoc with your mind. And he does. And he uses those things that you think are no longer there, that have been gone away for years, and all of a sudden, how come I did that? How come I said that? How come I reacted like that? How come I reacted out of, out of bitterness instead of love? It's because those thoughts, the devil's bringing them forward out of your brain, and you just speak them. You may not even think about it. You may not even react to it, but you just speak them. You go, what did I do that for? It's because they were stored in there. So when you speak one of those right, the best thing to do that I found for me is to write it down, to try to, you know, re visualize it, and then put, put a, write down something alongside of it that changes it so that it no longer, and repeat the change instead of repeating the original thought. Remember that your mind is the most powerful thing, thing in the universe for us after God. Therefore, you should think of what, what we do and what we say. Your mind is very, very powerful. It can do, and look at this world we live in today compared to what we lived in uh, 200 years ago. The mind of man has changed this world to the world we live in today. So you can, your mind can change your brain to rechange the thoughts that are negative in your mind or your brain to positive thoughts. Um, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. I'm only, I come here for one reason, and that's to encourage you to help you understand what goes on in your life of the actions and reactions that you do that you don't really un, know why you did it. So that's why I'm here today, is to help you understand how to help yourself think better, visualize better, and receive better. Casting down at arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We need to cast it down. We need to get rid of them. We need to remove them. And the best method I have come up with is taking bad thoughts and changing them to good thoughts and replacing those bad thoughts with good thoughts. And that way you gradually change each thought that has caused you a problem like doubt and fear, anger, anxiety, misunderstanding what's going on in your life. As you bring those out, like for instance, Robert's prayed for me for years about my shoulder. Why is I going in for an operation the 20th? Because in my mind, I can't be healed. That thought would have been in there for years. Doubt and unbelief. So now, as I've been working with more and more people on the streets, that's where I do most of my ministry, as I'm finding as I pray for those, I receive better, better vision of belief of God's Word. Galatians 2.20. Am I on the right track, boss? <laughs> I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If we really believe that scripture, if we really understand what that scripture is saying to us, it is no longer you that wants to change yourself. It's the spirit within you that wants to change you and wants to bring you into a new uh, level of belief, a new level of understanding of what the word is really mean. Because the word is sharper than two-edged sword, sword. It divides bone and marrow. But it also divides what your brain has stored from what your mind wants to do. So by that division, you can take your mind and say, okay, I'm going to train my brain. And it has been proven... Um, both chemically and scientifically that we can actually change the thought patterns because as you move away from a thought pattern that's negative and you move into a thought pattern that's positive, that thought pattern 
it's in your brain diminishes. It goes away because you no longer use it. So your brain doesn't need it, so it doesn't use it. So it gradually goes away. And you can do this over, I say, 21 days to 31 days of every day doing it, and it goes away because when it comes forth the next, oh, yeah, I remember what, I, what my positive thought was. I want to do this instead of this or say this or act like this. Um, Galatians. Okay, go, go to Deuteronomy 30, 15. I cheated on that one. <laughs> See, I have set before you a table today, life, and I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. He has set before us the ability to have life more abundantly. Don't you really want to have more life, more abundantly, more in filling of the Holy Spirit, more understanding of the Word? That's what you really need to desire in your heart. I've been working on my ministry to build desire in people's heart to want, to want to change. Because if they don't want to change, they're not going to change. So I ask them, I say, well, do you like what you're doing right now? Do you want your, the life of death that you live in the world, or do you want the life of Christ to live forever with him? And I expect, express that to them. I say, which way do you want to go? How do you want to live the rest of your life? And so they, they accept that, that they need to change and become something other than what they have been. And I, I do this with Christians a lot because um, they have set theologies, set ideas about Christianity. Many people I talk to today don't want to play, speak in tongues because somebody has told them it's not something they want to do. And I said, well, you know, you got to remember that tongues is your personal language to God and the devil doesn't understand it. So why wouldn't you want to speak in tongues? And so I give them a desire to want to, want to change the way they look at life and the way they look at the way they perceive things. So that way they're heading down a different road than just uh, walking, well, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. I'll go out here and I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do something else wrong. Why do you want to do that? Because those bad thoughts, those negative thoughts keep coming out, coming forth in your mind, in your brain to tell your mind to do those things. Second uh, Corinthians 10, 5 again. Uh -huh. Bring into ca in every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We've got to bring every thought, every remembered, every negative thought that's in your mind, you've got to bring it into the captivity of Christ and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you change those negative thoughts. And so that way you're building up, you keep building up a reserve of positive thinking a reserve of positive brain patterns that help you live far, what I say, peaceful and more joyful life. It's given me a lot more joy once I get rid of those negative thoughts in my life. So as that joy builds up from getting rid of the negativism and getting rid of the bad influences on my mind and my brain, my life becomes a lot peaceful, a lot more happier, a lot more enjoyable. I no longer have those negative problems that give me trouble all the time, or even negative dreams, for instance. I've even had that happen, too. It's changed those negative dreams to positive dreams. Joshua 30. Huh? 30. What? Oh, Joshua 24, 15. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was reading down. I was I looked, looked at my writing. <laughs> And if it all seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers which were ser you fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites and those land who dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's the decision I've made 
about my thinking, about my stored thoughts, is I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to change because I want to serve the Lord. I want to be the Lord's servant. I, want, I don't want to go out here in this world and have some guy say, well, that's Christians for you. I had a person who asked me to do something for them. I started the process of doing it for them. Uh, got in, put a little bit of money into it. Then they all of a sudden they decided to change because of words said of some actions that took place. And the only reason why they, they changed it was because they haven't changed their negative thoughts about certain people, particularly my age, about how we do things. They think that I'm senile. Why? Because that's their perception of a person who's older. So they need to change that negative thought. People who are older can be just as effective and as useful as people who are younger, huh? <laughs> but she hasn't changed that thought. <laughs> well, it happens to everybody, particularly when you get older. I've heard for years, well, when you get older, you're no good anymore. Well, that negative thought has been planted in this society very deep. And so I've been helping her change that negative thought they say, yes, older persons are well worth, worth their while, well worth the listening to, because they have a lot of wisdom. So I've choose to uh, serve the Lord. And in doing so, I no longer think those kind of thoughts, because the Lord won't let me. He says, you know better than that. Cut it out. Isaiah 30, 21. One other scripture that read it, and I'll bring it up towards the end of this, but it really comes for us is Isaiah 61. For your, for your ears shall hear the word. Behind you saying, this is the way to walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whether you turn to the left. That's that inner voice that talks to you. It's the Spirit of God saying, why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you make this decision to talk like that? It's telling you not to do that. It's telling you to change. Make a change in the way you talk, speak, act. And in doing so, those people around us will no longer say, well, that's a Christian for you. We don't want that. Right, Miriam? <laughs> the Lord is preaching to preach it, not me. I just, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just his servant. <coughs> Romans 12.2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect to the will of God. That's the basis of it. That's the bottom line. That's what we're talking about. Because God wants us to be not only acceptable to Him, but to be acceptable to the people around us. All ages, no matter what size they are, what shape they are, what color how they have, what they look like. I remember... Uh, Roy Hicks Jr. said one time, he had a church in Eugene, Oregon, and he said that I, my ministry was focused on the denominations way of doing things until a hippie walked in my back door one day. And he said, all of a sudden, I looked at that person, and the Lord said, that's your ministry. And he said, why, Lord? And he said, because that's the lost person that you need to reach, not these people that are here. Because Jesus says, I did not come to heal the... the uh, well, the healthy, I come to heal the sick. I come to minister to the sick. And that's what we need to do. We need to change the way we think, the negative thoughts about those around us, so we can go out and heal those people and bring them to the Lord and stop this, well, that's not my ministry. That's not what God's called me to do. Or well, gee, in Mark 16 and 15, it told us all to go out and preach the gospel and lay hands on the sick. It didn't say just certain people. So we need to really think about do I want to change or not? Or do I want to continue down that negative path that I've had for so many years? So I, I reach out to you to change, to do things differently, to change the way your brain has stored all that stuff. And I, I've seen 
mothers in stores say, well, that's a brat. Or I've seen mothers say, well, you're worthless for no good for nothing. I've seen fathers saying to do the same thing. Those negative thoughts have got in those children's minds at that age. And then later on in life, they, they wonder why they don't step out and step forward to accomplish the things that they could. It's because they don't believe they can't because of those negative thoughts. So we need to help these people change these negative thoughts. It says in John 14, 14, So I encourage you, I really encourage you to think of in yourself, how can I change? How can I help somebody else be a better person? By helping them understand how they can take the negative thoughts they have in their mind and change them to positive thoughts. And you do this, I say, you do this through this, these scriptures that say in John and Mark, Matthew 14, or John 14, 14, excuse me. This is the power behind it. It says here, it says, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it for you. There's no reason in this world why we can't change. There's no reason why we can't go out and minister to these people. Because if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. He, he said to the disciples, it says, as you go and you Go into the city. Don't worry about what you're going to say or speak because I'll give you the words. It says in Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it will give them to you. Seek and it will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Ask for wisdom. Ask for the Holy Spirit to bring out the stuff that has stopped you from doing things. Believing, understanding that God wants to heal you. God wants to minister to you. God wants to lift you up. God wants to make a better person out of you. He's given us all kinds of encouraging scriptures how he's always going, because I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Therefore, take heed that the light that is in you is not in darkness. We are the light of the world, folks. We're the ones that shine forth. If we have negative thoughts and negative things coming out of us, how does that do to our light? It darkens it. It causes it to be diminished. So we need to change all that. Become that light that shines forth, that people can see Christ in us. Christ loves us, and he wants that love to come out. He doesn't want the darkness to be there. And I'll give you this scripture, and this is one that I originally started out with years ago when I first started being... Um, a Christian. This was quoted to me by a pastor, in, well, actually, Roy Hicks Jr. He was the one that co quoted this to me years ago. Get to it. Psalms 1, 2. But delight in his law, or the word. I put the word, uh, the word as the law in there because that's what they're talking about. Delight in his law, or word of the Lord. And in his law or word, he meditates day and night. And she, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, that dwells in us, so that we will be able to walk better, walk without negativity, and walk in a positive world. And I know Jesus Christ wants us to be there, because that's his desire for us. When we're negative, we're not there. But when we're positive, we are. So I just suggest that you start working on removing those negative thoughts through meditation. Ask God to show them to you. Ask God to bring them forth. Write them down. Then write down beside it a positive thought. It will change that thought. And then start practicing repeating that positive thought until it's changed. Thank you. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm a humble servant that comes before you. Thank you, Lord God, that you have opened up these scriptures to me and these folks here and those on the internet. I ask, Lord, you bring forth fruit out of those scriptures. I ask forth that you bring forth a desire in every person's heart to want to change, to want to remove all the negativity in their high lives and turn it into positivity in us. And I thank you, Lord God, that you give us the power of the Holy Spirit and your presence to do that. 
We just thank you, Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Robert with Rider Ministries. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure it has helped you. And I just also want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So pray with me out loud and accept the Lord as your Savior. Say with me, Heavenly Father, that's right, say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and dwell within me and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer, God heard you, He's written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will get to be with Him in heaven. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer. So give us a call at 503-652-2650. Let us know you prayed that prayer of salvation. We love you. God loves you. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.